you've been searching for the best way to generate passive income in your life and heard that real estate is a great way to do it, but you're tired of all the so-called gurus who are all talk and no substance. Get ready to celebrate because Kevin Buck has spent 14 years successfully making it happen. This is the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast. Now, here's Kevin Buck. Hey guys, Kevin Bupp here, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast, where our mission is to help you build and maintain massive amounts of cash flow through income producing real estate investments. Our guest for this week's show is creator of LinkedInMakeover.com and one of the most sought out after, after LinkedIn experts in the space, Donna Serdula. Now, Donna pioneered the concept of LinkedIn profile optimization, is the author of LinkedIn Profile Optimization for Dummies. Uh, through her website, LinkedInMakeover.com, Donna and her team of over 20 writers help thousands of LinkedIn users strategically write their profile in order to engage with their audience and grow their brand. Now, Donna is an in-demand speaker throughout the U.S., and she's been featured on Business Insider, Times Money Section, Wall Street Journal's Market Watch, LA Times, NBC, Sirius XM Radio's The Focus Group, and many other news outlets. And so with that, guys, I'm excited to welcome back Donna Serdula to the show. Donna, welcome back. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me back. It's, yeah. it's, been, it's been a number of uh, years, hasn't it? It has been a long time. I look back and you're like episode number 20 and I've got like <laughs> over 400 episodes now and, uh, and I've got more gray hairs. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I think that's the only thing else that's changed. I still feel the same and I, I think I still have the same energy level and you look great yourself. So I think we're oh, both doing you. really good in life. <laughs> 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 Love it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, so Donna, for those that might not be familiar with you, uh, might not listen to that show or heard you in other places because you've been all over the, I mean, you've, you've, you've been many different outlets mm -hmm. uh, over the past six years and you've been doing this a long time. And so, but for those that aren't familiar with you and your background, maybe take a few minutes, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you became the LinkedIn expert. Oh goodness. And you know, I have been doing this for so long. It's it's it almost like boggles my mind now, but it was over a decade ago I started my business and I had realized that it's hard to write about yourself. And LinkedIn is a fabulous, fabulous network, a great platform to tell your story, uh, to really help shape how people perceive you. Because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, I, re I realized that people look to other people's LinkedIn profiles to understand more about them, to really shape what they think of you. And this is this amazing place to tell the world who you are, what you do, how you help, what you stand for. And so many people were just copying and pasting an out of date resume and thinking that was good enough. And it, it really wasn't good enough. It's still not good enough. Um, this is a place to take, to t really take seriously. And when you do, amazing things happen. Uh, and I, I like to say when you showcase your best, you attract the best. And, and that's not just job opportunities. It's not about recruiting necessarily. It's, it's prospects, it's investors, it's partnerships. It's really about attracting those things that you want, whatever your strategy, whatever your goal is for LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And when was LinkedIn founded? So you say you've been doing this about a decade uh, and I, yes. I, I'm sure I could have looked it up real quick, but just, I know you know 2000, the Well, so here's the thing. It, it was like 2002 and 2003, like right in between there wow. was when it was founded. So you'll see, you'll see 2002, you'll see 2003, but 2003 is really when it started to make more, more of a rumbling. So what, what, what are some of the big evolutions that have occurred over the last five years since we left? And honestly, like my, my profile on LinkedIn as it sits today, it's probably very similar to what maybe you had suggested six years ago or five years ago when we <laughs> talked. I'm sure like it's probably outdated again. And there's been some things updated on it. But uh, in any event, just generally speaking, I know this might be a loaded question. You know, what are some of the mm -hmm. big, biggest changes that have occurred over the last five years with LinkedIn? Oh my goodness. I think the, the Microsoft acquisition was probably one of the biggest tsunamis that hit LinkedIn. And it was a good thing because it really infused them with a lot of, uh, a lot of money and a, a lot of talent. And uh, we saw a lot of changes. Um, and I don't know if it was directly the Microsoft acquisition, but they realized that they want their LinkedIn feed, that homepage, to be sticky. 
They want people to come and, and check it out and stay there and scroll like you do on Twitter or on Facebook or Instagram now. And so they really started to change the way they, they handled that feed. At one time, and you might remember this, Kevin, you'd go onto the LinkedIn feed and it was like so-and-so connected to so-and-so and so-and-so connected to so-and-so and someone updated their headline and someone updated their experience. And it was the most boringest feed ever. So, and, and then on top of that, LinkedIn was like constantly spamming you with connection requests and all this other stuff. And they said, stop, let's, let's change the way we work. And if you look at LinkedIn now, it's, it's really more than half, well more than half, don't even go to the linkedin.com on a browser, they access it on their mobile app Mm -hmm. and they want to scroll through their, their newsfeed and see what their, their connections and their network are talking about. It's much more friendly. It's much more interesting. And it's, it's, it's sure a lot more sticky than ever before. Yeah. How do the, does the algorithm algorithm differ with LinkedIn than it does with like Facebook or, or Instagram, what have you? I mean, like with Facebook, as we know, you might have, you know, three or 4,000 friends, but like you're, all, you're only seeing a very small percentage. Does the algorithm in LinkedIn work kind of the same way with regards to connections and whose feed you're seeing and whose you're not seeing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting closer to what Facebook has done. Okay. In fact, LinkedIn has said they want that feed to be the people you know, talking about the things that you care about. Hmm. And so you'll see that if you comment or like on someone's, you know, someone's post, you'll start to see more of their posts hitting your feed because you showed LinkedIn that you have a relationship with them. So little bits of activity with someone will then produce more and more uh, showings on your feed of their, of their material. Got it. Let's talk about LinkedIn Live. The mysterious, <laughs> mysterious LinkedIn Live that I've been trying to get approved for for the past, I don't know, four or five months. And tell, I mean, everyone knows. How many Facebook. applications have you put oh in? Oh my God. I mean, hand, I, I've lost track. In fact, now I've just, I've somewhat given up on it because I don't, I don't know if anyone's even receiving it on the other side. So what, Tell me, give me the insider's pitch as to, we know, we know what LinkedIn Live, everyone knows what Facebook Live is. LinkedIn Live is very much the same thing. It's just on the LinkedIn platform, but it's very difficult to get approved. It's very, it's very <laughs> difficult. And I have to admit, I have not been approved either. <laughs> But I'm really surprised, Kevin, that you haven't because you have all of the the hallmarks of someone that they would want on LinkedIn Live. One, you uh, have shown consistency. You have been doing this for as long as I've known you, and I've known you since 2014. Um, You you, you put out really good information. Uh, You always have really special, interesting people on, um, and, and you do a great job of it. So that right there is what LinkedIn is looking for, consistency and quality. So it surprises me that you you haven't been able to, you haven't been accepted. I would say to you, really make sure that when you submit that application, you're really looking at that description and really, really letting them know how you're different and, and what value you're going to bring. And I think you may find that if you submit one more, one, two, three more, you know, thousand applications, you might be accepted. You think it has anything to do with, so one thing I do not do on Facebook, I don't do a lot of Facebook lives. In fact, I do, I, do, I post a lot of videos, mm-hmm. but I, I do very little Facebook live. Do you think they're looking at things yeah. such as that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, they are that, looking that to see it. if you're doing a lot of the, the, the lives. But yeah. at the yeah. same time, you've got the podcast. So one would think that they would notice. But here's the thing. It's, it's there. Um, you might as well just upload YouTube videos and you can get the same, you know, you can get the same viewership and, and uh, notoriety that way. Is, is Facebook Live really, is it garnering the, the traction that they had hoped for? I mean, is is it getting a lot of eyeballs such as, uh, you know, uh, Facebook Live might have gotten? Or did I say the the LinkedIn LinkedIn Live? I think I said, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know, I know exactly what you mean. And, and, you know, it, to me, there was a swell, uh, maybe, gosh, maybe, I don't know if it was the pandemic that has squashed it a little. One would almost think that the pandemic would have really, you know, brought it up to the forefront. But to me, it seems like it was like six months ago or so that I was hearing a lot about it. I was seeing a lot of them popping up in my newsfeed and it, it felt like, Hey, this is this is up and coming, and of late it's been a little bit more quiet. So I don't know what they're doing. I, I 
I, I don't even know. I'm, I wish I could tell you. Hmm. Okay. No, fair, fair enough. Well, let's talk about profile optimization. I mean, let's you know, give me the basics of what the listeners need to know to ensure that they have optimized their profile. I mean, again, I, I'm sure that you could, you probably look at mine now and you probably tear it apart for, you know, there's probably multiple <laughs> things that you would suggest that I, that I, that I upgrade on it, but just generally speaking, what are like the top five or top 10 items that, that they need to be focused on? Sure. Do you want me to tell you something that's very, very new, but a lot of fun and very few people have done it? Please. All right. So this is, this is it. You've got to get onto your, your, your cell phone, get onto your smartphone and you need to open up the LinkedIn app. And then once you've done that, you want to go to your profile. And once you view your profile, you're going to want to look right near your name and you're going to see it says add pronunciation. And almost everyone seems to just ignore it. Very few people, I think, really look at their, their profile mm. on their mobile app. But this is really the only way to do it. You can't do it on the desktop. So you want to view your profile on your mobile app. You want to look right around your... your like Go into the, uh, the edit icon right, right near your background graphic. And it'll say, add pronunciation. And you can actually record your voice saying your name. And then when you, other people look at your profile, they're going to see like a little speaker, but here's the thing, Kevin, you don't have to just say your name. You can give your elevator pitch. Hmm. I like that. That's impressive. Well, it's, you know, with, with a name like, you know, Kevin Bupp, it's not like one of those names that's hard to <laughs> pronounce, but with Adonis Sardula, <laughs> it's certainly helpful to let people know exactly how the name is said. Can you access that, uh, the pronunciation then on the desktop? I mean, can you, and w once it's recorded, you can access it, right? So if I go to any, yes. your profile, I can listen to your, your elevator picture or the pronunciation of your, your name, what have you. Is, yeah, there a, exactly. is, there a, is there a limitation of how long that recording can be? Ten know? seconds. Ten okay, seconds. that's gonna be a quick elevator pitch. So which- It's a quick elevator yeah, pitch, but you, you'd be surprised at how much you can get in there. Yeah, no, I, I love that. That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's really quick, really easy. Something that I think everyone listening can do within like five seconds and it's going to elevate your profile mm -hmm. and it's going to add warmth. It's going to really add your personality in a way that, you know, it's, it's, it's a little hard sometimes to do just through typing. So I think it's a fabulous thing, you know, in terms of your LinkedIn profile, you know, if you really want to optimize it, there's a few things that you need to do. And the first thing you need to do is say to yourself, why am I on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to achieve? What's my goal? What am I like? Why am I here? And, you know, it could be I'm doing this for reputation management. I'm doing this for branding. I'm doing this for job search. I, I'm doing this because I'm doing it for like prospecting. I'm, I'm looking for investors. You know, whatever your, your goal is, you want to be very clear upfront. And then you want to think about that target audience and what are they using LinkedIn for? And how are they trying to find someone like you? Like, how would they try to bring you into their life? What, what, what phrase might they be using on like the search engine? And, and think of it like that. And once you think of what those keywords are, a person would be using, you want to make sure you use those keywords in your profile. Because when you use those words that people are using to search for someone like you, that's when you're going to turn up higher and more often in search results. And very few people strategically approach their profile in that manner. And that's why they don't get found. That's why they think there's no opportunity in those, those hills out there. And so by really taking just that moment to say, wait, how is a person searching? You know, what are they using? What are those keywords? And let me put them into my profile. Let me put them into my headline. Let me put them into my about section. Let me put them into my, my job titles and my job descriptions. When you really infuse your keywords, that's when you're going to get found. And that's when you're going to collide hmm. with opportunity. Is, is there one better place to put those keywords than another on your profile? Or does, does LinkedIn basically search all the above, whether it be the headline, you know, the, the body, uh, you know, past jobs? What, I mean, where yeah, they, they, they search, they search up and down, but okay, okay. the headline is very sensitive, very, very sensitive. I've also found that job titles are very sensitive for search. So those two areas specifically, but if you can, now I'm not talking about doing this in a, inauthentic, obnoxious type of way where you just list them, you know, one right after the other. That's terrible. That's not going to help you. But if you can organically work those keywords into your content, into your narrative, that's when you're really going to see that trifecta. And, you know, you're going to start seeing yourself 
popping up. The other thing, Kevin, is not only do you want to have those keywords in your profile, but you want to make sure that your profile is relatively fresh. So if you haven't updated in three months, in six months, in three years, you want to make sure that you update your profile because that shows LinkedIn that you're paying attention to your brand and it's fresh. It's not stale. So, and, and then in, in addition to that, you want to be active on LinkedIn. The more active you are, that also lets LinkedIn know that, hey, this is a, this is a pertinent search result listing if I show it. And it's going, to, it's going to bring value to the person who's searching if they, if they come down and they look at that search result and click on that profile. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Yeah. I do need to go and update my headshot. <laughs> it's, it's the headshot's about nine years old that I have in my profile. So that's one thing I could do today. <laughs> you, could, you could do the headshot. You could do yeah, the I know. headline. I'm joking. I just keep making fun of myself because my <laughs> mind's, mind's been outdated here for a little while uh, as I have the LinkedIn expert on the show. So I was, I was hoping maybe you'd come on and like, you know, beat me up a little bit about my profile, but you didn't. So it's very kind. No, of no, no. I, I would never <laughs> do that. In fact, I was, I was impressed because you have a background graphic and very few people have background graphics. So that's, that's really a, a great thing. And yours is, there's a picture of you and you've got a little quote there. So you've, you've branded that area and that's a good thing. Hey guys, Kevin Bupp here at Sunrise Capital Investors. As you are hopefully already well aware, if you've been a listener for any period of time, my goal has always been to provide you with as much value as I possibly can through my two podcasts, Real Estate Investing for cash flow and the Mobile Home Park Investing Podcast. As our audience continues to grow, literally, we've been downloaded millions of times by folks in over 125 countries. I've had thousands of people reach out looking to get involved in our niche. And that's the phenomenal niche of mobile home park investing. Now, for those that don't know, I've been a full-time real estate investor for more than 20 years now, and I've personally invested in and have owned apartment complexes, various commercial properties, hundreds of single-family rentals, and I've interviewed some of the most successful investors and just about every other asset class, and I've arrived at this one very simple conclusion. Mobile home parks are hands down the best investment I've found to date. Why? They provide investors with the best risk-adjusted returns out of any other real estate sector that I've seen. Investing in real estate can get complicated, and I really want to simplify this process for you. If you're someone who wants to diversify away from the uncertainty of Wall Street and allocate a percentage of, of your real estate portfolio to mobile home parks, but maybe you don't have the time nor the inclination to personally locate good deals yourself, then our team will do it for you. At Sunrise Capital Investors, our team specializes in the acquisitions and management of undervalued and highly profitable mobile home parks. And we are now providing accredited investors with an opportunity to participate directly alongside our team in Growth and Income Fund 3. When you invest in our fund, you get immediate diversification into multiple deals we acquired off market that are already performing and have built in sweat equity. And let me say this, I believe that we are hands down the best in our space at sourcing highly profitable off market deals. That's really what makes us unique in this niche and as investment managers. As stewards of your capital, we truly are aligned with our investors. We've structured our investment fund so that we as a company are incentivized in the same way the investor is, which is through the performance of the investment itself. In addition, we want to make sure that we not only make money for our investors, but that they understand how it's being made. That's why we provide our accredited partners with a private monthly podcast that walks them through the detailed updates on how their investment is performing. And we're very transparent, providing you with the good, the bad, and the ugly at times. And so if you'd like to learn more about the partnership opportunities with our team here at Sunrise, please visit us at investwithsunrise.com and request access to the investor presentation. It's absolutely free, and you'll get instant access to review the off-market deals that we've already purchased that you can co-own with our team. Also, feel free to call us at 833-CASHFLOW without the O. Again, that's 833-227-4359. And our investor relations team will help you schedule an appointment to speak with one of our managing principals. If you have questions, go ahead and schedule the call. Let's jump on the phone. And with that, guys, I'd like to leave with one last thought. From the time that I wake up in the morning to the time that I lay my head down the rest of the evening, my number one priority with everything I do, whether it be recording this podcast working for our investors, helping each of you reach your investment goals, to providing a great experience to each of our residents who reside in our communities, is to add huge amounts of value to everyone that I come in contact with. Now, with that being said, I look forward to the opportunity of bringing value to you through Sunrise and through this podcast. Thank you for your time. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the show.
<laughs> so let's talk about some some LinkedIn hacks. Are there any hacks out there that we can utilize to you know uh, gain more exposure, grow our network, what have you? I know that they're you know forever changing. There's always little you know you know unique ways that one can kind of accelerate you know their uh, expansion of, of of the network, but more so the you know connections on the network. A- anything that you can think of that might be beneficial that works today. And again, it might not work six months from now. Someone's listening to this, but generally speaking, are there any hacks that might be useful? Well, this isn't necessarily a, a hack, but it's, it's something that few people do. And, and that is really pay attention to hashtags, especially if you're posting mm. on LinkedIn. You want to make sure that you know what your hashtags are. So it's not like every post that you you do, you just, you know, like grab some hashtags and just, you know, add them at the end or, you know, populate them through the, through the post. You really want to be strategic about it. And you want to think, you know, the content that I create, I want it to, to be attractive to and, and of interest and and value and, and relevant to my target audience. What are the hashtags that they may be following? What are the hashtags that they're going to find, you know, interesting and then make sure that like really, really research a hashtag before you even use it. So like if you go in and do marketing tips, maybe there's a thousand followers on marketing tips, but if you just did marketing, there's like 3 million followers of that hashtag. So by simply just removing tips from that hashtag, you are potentially exposing that post to millions of more views. Hmm. Interesting. So just literally search that hashtag in LinkedIn and in, 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 in the keyword search box. And mm-hmm. okay. Like yeah. So, so if you're posting on LinkedIn, one, make sure that more people than just your network can see it, of course, yeah, yeah. You make sure that it's public and then make sure that you put in at least three hashtags. In fact, you know, there's been rumblings, you know, how many hashtags in a post for the longest of time, LinkedIn just said three hashtags. If you do any more, any less, it's just not going to perform as well. We're starting to see that, you know, you can do, you know, up to six or so, um, and you'll get a lot of eyes because of those hashtags. But if you put like 20 hashtags on a post, that's not good. It, it, like you would think the more hashtags, the more, you know, followers of those hashtags are going to see your post. But after a while, it really does start to work against you. Yeah. So I would say somewhere between three to six hashtags per post and be very strategic of the hashtags that you choose. Make sure that of course they relate to the content of your post, Sure, but that they have a lot of followers. Don't just do like cutesy little hashtags just because you know, you really want to be really thoughtful and specific when choosing. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like for a lot of folks, uh, you know, the, every, most everyone knows that's in business that they should be, uh, you know, utilizing these different social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, what have you, depending on who their target avatar is. Right. And so just uh, you know, assuming, let's just speak to LinkedIn, cause that's the topic that we're on today. Even if you just you'll pick that as the one platform that, Hey, I want to be consistent on, I want to get more exposure. Um, you know, I want to grow my network. It's still, when you really chunk it down, it can become overwhelming thinking, uh, you know, through what well, I need to make a post a day. Uh, I don't even know what to talk about. Uh, you know, I mean, should it be a video? Should it just be a post? Uh, who do I need to be connecting with? What type of advice would you give someone to help them create an efficient, manageable mm-hmm. um, uh, process that would allow them to garner the exposure, grow their network on, on, on LinkedIn without getting completely overwhelmed and full of anxiety every time I think of the word LinkedIn. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that's a, that's such a great question. You know, for the longest of time, we used to think in terms of the more, the, you know, the higher, the, the more quantity, you know, the better, like let's push it out, churn as much content as we can. And that was overwhelming to people. I mean, I, myself, I used to put out like 15 posts a day wow. on LinkedIn. How's that even possible? Oh, it's not, it's, it's hard. It's not, you just, you can't even do it alone. You've got other people helping you to find the content and you're posting it and you're using uh, Hootsuite or Publer yeah. or, you know, yeah. one of those other aggregators out there. Um, but, you know, at one time, if you wanted to be, you know, front and center, you had to produce that content. We were talking about the things that have changed, you know, within the LinkedIn realm 
And that's one of what that's one of the big changes that I've seen. And I started to notice it. You know, I, I I couldn't, you know, it's really hard to maintain 15 posts a day. And I think we we eventually got down to like five posts a day. But I started to really look at my stats. And it didn't matter if I posted five times a day or once a day. The numbers, the views were almost the same, which like boggled my mind. And I started to realize that. LinkedIn isn't rewarding you for having a lot of posts. They reward you for having really good quality. Mm. And now I might post three times a week. I might post once a week. I don't need to post so much. In fact, if you post and you need to let that post sort of mature and, and rise and, and like kind of like surf that wave of views because if you post again like right before you kind of you kind of kill the one just prior so i like to let my my posts go and i let like to let them mature a little bit before i post again and i find i get thousands of views when i do that Interesting. Uh, you know, one of the things that overwhelms me with LinkedIn, so I do have, I do have someone that, you know, for the most part posts on my behalf. Um, it's, it's all the, I literally, and I don't get in there every day because I've got someone else posting content on my behalf. And so, you know, the, the once a week I get in LinkedIn, I've got so many incoming requests that I don't even know what to do with them all. And and 80% of them seem to be spam. If you just look at like the, you know, the first sentence or so. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's like, like the very first word in the headline is I can, it leads, I can get you. Oh leads. my God. <laughs> the, the biggest guard, like, like, like 80% of these folks have never been trained, trained in basic sales one-on-one. It's like, really, that's not how you start a conversation at all. Anyway, how did, how do you avoid that? <laughs> there, there's there. Well, there's, well, there is one thing you can do. Um, if you go into your settings within LinkedIn, um, and don't ask me exactly how I can, I'll send you a, a link and you can, you can share it with people, but you can actually change your connect button to a follow button. And so when people view your profile, it no longer says connect, it says follow. And that helps keep the number of spammy requests down. Okay. So a person just naturally follows you rather than connects with you. Um, so that, that helps, but ultimately, unfortunately, it's these automated bots that people are using and they're, that's what's sending these just, you know, mm. an ending amount of invites. Um, there's not much you can do, unfortunately. Okay, no, fair enough. But you know, changing a button from connect to, to follow is is a really good way. That's a one 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 thing that you can do. But ultimately, it's these these bots that so, are responsible for it. So if they follow you, then they 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 can't send you a direct message. It, it, it has to be an in mail, or does in mail even Correct. exist anymore? The, the, no, in mails do exist. Okay, but if you are paying for LinkedIn, so if if you're if you've ponied up and you're paying for it, um, you can actually put your profile to open profile, which means anyone can send you a message on LinkedIn. Got it. So at that point, it really doesn't matter. Now, it's, it's great to have a strong first degree network, right? I mean, we all strive for that because when most normal people are searching LinkedIn, they are searching their LinkedIn network for second, third degree connections. So if you're not within that network, you won't necessarily pop up high in the search results. So yes, you want to have a strong first degree network um, that does help you perform better in search results. But at the same time, at some point, your network becomes so strong that you don't need to just be filling it with garbage. And at that point, you know, you can decide who you really want to connect with. And those people who really don't know you, people that you really don't, you know, have much of a relationship, they're the ones that should be following you. It's the people that you do have a connection with. They're the ones that should be connecting to you. And they would go that extra step to click more, to click connect, or you'd be doing it for them. Got it. Got it. Now that all makes sense. And you, you mentioned something about if you're paying for a subscription, it, it, does it, do we need to be paying for a subscription or does the free platform offer the majority enough benefits? So I always say this when, when asked that question, I believe that for most people, the free version is good enough. 
Just what I want you to do is use LinkedIn. <laughs> just use LinkedIn. Don't even worry about paying for it first. Just use it. Make sure you've got this. Make sure you know your strategy to make sure you've optimized and you're telling your story, an authentic, engaging, conversational story on your LinkedIn profile um, that makes people feel good and impressed and confident in who you are and what you offer. Then you want to start growing your network, right? You want to make sure that your offline network is reflected on your in, with your in <laughs> your online network. Sorry for the, the tongue twist there. But you want to make sure that you've got a good, strong network of all the people that you know and you've trust and you've met over the years and you've done business with and you like and you kind of like <laughs> and you want to make sure you're connected to them. And then once you have that that strong network, that's when you want to start engaging. And that's when you want to start joining that conversation. And you want to start you know, looking at seeing what people are posting on LinkedIn. And you want to start liking and, and, and commenting and sharing that. That's, that's, that's how you get success on LinkedIn. That right there is it in a nutshell. Got it. Got it. Now, how about LinkedIn groups? Is there, a, is there still a lot of power and leverage uh, being in either being in and joining LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups or maybe even starting your own? Well, you know what, Kevin, let me, I want to go back. I'm so sorry no, <laughs> about paying no. for LinkedIn. I, I do want to say this for the most part, if you do those things, and you start to find opportunity, you start to find good things happening, and you start to feel a little tethered, that's when it's time to pay for LinkedIn. And in fact, if you find that you want people to be messaging you that you're not connected to, ponying up is a good way of doing it. So, so there it. does come a time when it is absolutely worth it. But at that point, you already know there's a return on your time investment. So now there'll be a time on your actual monetary investment as well. Then to get into groups, I can answer that question. Well, no, real quick that. about the payments. So there, there was a little secret you shared, you know, five or six years ago uh, about a, you had to dig to find it, but there was like a special membership. Uh, it was like, the, oh yeah, the it was spot, like seven ninety nine. dollars pant, yeah. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> Is that gone? Okay. Dead. Dead, it's gone. I wish, oh God, those were the days. You know, I was, I was on um, a, a conference call um, with a whole bunch of uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, like product managers a few years back. And I said, what, what's going on with these, these expensive plans? Like you used to have some really cheap ones. You know, what's what you know, like, don't you have any intention of putting something out there that's you know, really affordable and, you know, easy for a lot of people. And they were like, no, <laughs> no, easy answer. <laughs> So uh, back to groups, I, I cut you off there, but you were about to go into groups and whether or not that, you know, that should be a place we're spending time either engaging in existing groups uh, that obviously are, are in line with our profession or interest uh, or even potentially starting a group. And I, I remember I remember one of the big benefits back in the day, and I'm sure it's still there, but the big leverage, one of the big leverage points I found with uh, being involved in some very specific groups was you had the ability to join that group and then uh, direct a message anyone within that group, even if they weren't a you know, first line connection. I thought that was incredible. And that, and that is still true. Yeah, okay. that is still true. Um, you know, it's so funny. As you're talking, I was thinking about that old song, radio, uh, Video Killed the Radio Star. <laughs> do you remember that song? I do. <laughs> it's so old, but um, I think hashtags killed the groups. <laughs> On, okay. on LinkedIn. Um, well, at one time, the groups on LinkedIn were just so vibrant. They were brimming. They were chock full of interesting people and interesting discussions. And you could go in and find these really niche subjects with, with active participants that it was just, it was a fabulous, fabulous place to go. And LinkedIn, um, introduced this moderation tool, which allowed people to pretty much silence certain members. Um, I don't want to get too, too much into it, but it, it really wrecked havoc on mm. groups and the administrators of groups. And um, slowly, it, they started to die. And Facebook groups just, you know, so much more interesting and so many tools and moderation ability. Um, I've got to tell you, I feel that LinkedIn groups are dead. Okay. I really feel they're dead. I think the only 
the only real thing they offer right now, two things. One, when you join a group, all of those members are added to your network as third degree connections. So it kind of expands your network in a very quick and easy way. Um, but the problem is a lot of these closed groups you can't even get into because they have no moderators who are accepting those, gotcha. those requests. Um, the other thing is what you had mentioned, which is you can message group members, but so few new members even access groups. If you think about it, how do you get to groups on LinkedIn? It used to be right there at the very yeah, top. I, I, I honestly I haven't even tried. Is there not even a tab for it anymore? <laughs> there, there, so you have to go to the work waffle in the upper right hand side. That's that's the the official term for that little uh, icon. It looks like a waffle, so it's called the work waffle. And you click there, and then this little side panel opens, and in there is the groups icon. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I wish I. It was two years ago, uh, LinkedIn brought me and a number of other experts to their office in New York City uh, in the Empire State Building. And we uh, got to talk to these, these you know, product managers all about groups and what we wanted and, and how there could be this beautiful renaissance. And they took copious notes and they showed us PowerPoints of all the things they had planned. Nothing happened. <laughs> so I, I just feel that... If you want to find a place where people are talking about the things that you are interested in, follow those hashtags. Okay. It's good to know. Good to know. Donna, tell us about your services that your company provides. I mean, what do you do to help folks that are looking to gain more presence on LinkedIn? I'll, I'll let you give a, you know, kind of the overview uh, of your menu of services, if you would. Sure. Do you have an hour? No, just <laughs> So ultimately people come to me. Uh, because they recognize that people are checking them out on LinkedIn and nothing really happens from that interaction. And they, they really want to make sure that they're showcasing their best self or even uh, their, the best side of their company. They, you know, they, there are company pages, the LinkedIn pages for companies, and they want to make sure that what they're putting out there isn't just a copy and paste of their resume. It's not just a copy and paste of a bio. It's not just a copy and paste of their websites about section, but you know, that these, these, these areas that the page and the, the profile really tell a story and, and they tell it in a strategic optimized, interesting, engaging way that converts, that gets people to want to do business with you or learn more, or click somewhere. And so they, they come to us and we write their LinkedIn profile. We write their company page. We also uh, do like resumes and bios. Um, but it's really about saying, hey, you're an expert, you're a professional, you're an entrepreneur, you're an executive. Let's tell your story in a very authentic way. So good things happen to you. That's awesome. Where's the best place to find you? Where should we send listeners to that want to learn more about the services? Sure. LinkedIn-makeover.com. Got it. Got it. Good deal. Well, Donna, it's always fun. I'm, I'm, next time we'll have to make it not five years or six years and um, and, get, and get you back uh, here in the next year or two and uh, see what's going on with LinkedIn. And hopefully by that point in time, you and I will both have access to LinkedIn Live if it's still, oh. uh, if it still has a good presence. If, if it's something, <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I have good, I have hope for it. I think, I think they're going to open it up. And I think it's going to be this fabulous tool in everyone's back pocket and good things are going to happen. So I hope so. I believe that. Is yeah, it just I, in beta think, testing now? Is that why they're limiting it? I mean, is it still in beta or? It's in beta. Okay. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I, I've, I've heard it like I've heard through the grapevine. Oh, they're opening it up. Oh, they're opening it up. But it, it hasn't been opened yet. Yeah. At least as of this, this recording day, maybe tomorrow. Good but, yeah. The gates will fly open. Well, thank you so much for coming back on, Donna. Wishing you and your family and uh, your, your company all the best for 2021. I hope it's a phenomenal year for you guys. Oh, thank you so much. And you too. You too. All righty, guys. That's, how, that's all we have for this week's show. So until we meet again next week, this is your host, Kevin Buff, wishing you huge success. You guys take care. Congratulations. Now you've got more of the best tricks of the trade in building massive amounts of passive income from real estate. For more amazing resources, visit realestateinvestingforcashflow.com and we'll see you next Monday morning.